accelerate as more and more people use it. So what do we mean when you say right size your resources? Uh, and apologies for this graph, uh, as always seems to be the case when we put something together uh, at Amazon by the time I present it, it's already out of date. So what you've got here is 17 different types uh, of instance, instances that we offer uh, and many different families of instance types. So what you'll see there is if you're looking at, uh, at the slide, the green servers, um, they're the standard instance type, uh, standard ratio of um, CPU to memory. Um, then we've got the blue ones, which is high memory types and so forth. So what we're suggesting you do here is instead of the traditional way of buying a server and, and letting your developers just consume all of the CPU and memory, um, and feeding your application to the resource, what you can do um, is start to fit the resource to the application. Uh, and a question that we regularly get at this stage is, so when should I be using um, different instance types? Uh, and what instance type is right for my application? And it's a very difficult question to answer because every application is different. Uh, and even things like SharePoint, it depends on how your users are consuming that application, uh, for example. So the general rule of thumb that I use is, if you can't justify why you're not using the smaller instance type, and there are justifications, absolutely, things like an inability to load balance, uh, a very difficult time scaling up and down, um, or the absolute mission critical of having enough there when it's needed uh, and no ability to scale, so there are justifications, but if you can't, then you should be looking at scaling that server down uh, and right-sizing it to the application. So you've started to right-size your application. And then you've right-sized your, your EC2 and RDS instances um, to what you need. The next step is thinking about, okay, what business model suits um, that application? The most commonly used, and I'm sure you've probably all heard of this, is on-demand instances. Um, you pay as you go for computing power. You don't have to pay anything up front. Um, you're renting it by the hour, and it's a flat rate. Uh, and you can turn everything off, and less than 59 minutes later, your bill's going to go to zero, uh, and you can walk away. Uh, and that's where everybody should start. That's the first step in the journey, is on-demand, because it provides pure flexibility and dependability. The next step, and obviously the main focus uh, of the discussion today is reserved instances. So quickly, it's, it's a service where you pay a small upfront fee um, for a capacity and pricing reservation, and it lowers the hourly rate. Uh, and over the term, you can save uh, up to 72%. And then finally, uh, the other business model, and this one is only for EC2, not for RDS, uh, is spot instance types. Uh, and this is a fantastic opportunity to save more than 90% uh, off your EC2 bill by using what we've stolen uh, or taken or borrowed from the financial services sector, which is allowing supply and demand to determine price. Uh, so this is our unutilized capacity pool. Uh, and then based on supply and demand, the price is set. Now, a lot of applications should and could be taking advantage of this, certainly a lot more than us. So I encourage you uh, to understand a little bit more about Spot, um, but it is more of a niche case. It is where the application um, can handle interruption or can take a long time to run. Um, so if you'd like more information on that, feel free to get in contact with me directly uh, or your account managers. So you're at the point where you've said, reserved instances is the right business model for me. Uh, and there's a few questions that we get um, and I'm sure we'll get more through the chat today that we'll address at the end. Uh, but these are a few that pop up over the last two years and as I send out um, proposals. Um, so the first three, uh, what, what I would consider some skeptical questions. And the first one, why are you trying to reduce our spend by 40 to 70% Mr. Salesman? Um, it's a very peculiar thing within IT. Uh, and then the follow up, well, why is it so much cheaper? Um, have we just been paying too much for this uh, or have you been giving us um, a bad deal. And so initially, why do we want to reduce your spend? Why does a salesperson come up to you uh, and give you a proposal to reduce your overall costs by as much as 70%? Um, and the fact of the matter is that um, AWS is a company 
takes our customer obsession very seriously. Uh, and the other piece is part of that is that we think long term. Um, and so what we want to do is we want to make sure that you're getting the best value for every dollar you're spending on AWS so that when new projects or new refreshes come up with inside your organization, the question becomes, why isn't it AWS? As opposed to why should it go to AWS? So we want to be the lowest cost um, provider for you, and we want to deliver a fantastic service. Uh, and that comes right down from the top of our business, uh, Jeff Bezos, who says that um, we should go to bed at night worrying about whether we fully satisfied our customers. Uh, and so why and how is it so much cheaper? And I'm sure you've heard this metric. Uh, and that is that every day we add enough server capacity to our global data centers to power Amazon.com when it was a $7 billion enterprise. And that's a lot of servers at huge scale. Uh, and anybody in procurement of IT understands that um, the process for doing that isn't necessarily instant um, on our end. And so it's all about cash flow within the Amazon environment uh, and the ability to predict uh, what you're going to use because then we're able to lower our cost base significantly. And if we're able to lower our cost base significantly, our position is you should benefit from that, from being a customer that has been willing to tell us how much you're going to use these resources. So isn't an RI just like purchasing hardware? And this is an interesting one that we get every now and then. Um, and certainly uh, I understand why people think it. However, we never suggest you start with a reserved instance. We want you to rent it by the hour and be comfortable with what you're using. Um, and it's not locking you into a physical piece of, of kit. Um, you can continue to take advantage of Amazon's scale. Uh, and in fact, often um, when you turn on a new instance, the chances of it launching on the same hardware um, is very close to zero because of our scale. Uh, and then we've also introduced more flexibility, uh, which we're going to go into in detail. Um, that further makes it um, more and more flexible so that you can continue to utilize that cloud um, flexibility uh, that hopefully you enjoy. And then finally, um, the other skeptical question is, is this Amazon trying to put a contract in front of me? Um, is AWS, uh, I thought AWS doesn't do contracts. Um, and it, it isn't. So it is a commitment, but it's a commitment from Amazon to you. It's a commitment that we will have those resources available and it's a commitment that we will deliver that low price um, that you've agreed to uh, for the 12 or 36 month period. And it, it specifically isn't a contract because at any time you can turn off your account and walk away from AWS. Um, there is no long-term commitment. Uh, and then these next three questions are around those, okay, we, uh, we understand that AWS uh, can reduce our prices by using reserved instances. Um, so first question, do I need to turn off uh, and restart my instance? And the answer to that is no, absolutely not. Um, the reserved instance model is a billing overlay. So you leave your servers running and you purchase it based on um, a handful of uh, five different things that we'll go through in detail. Uh, and then we'll find any servers in your environment that are running that, or as soon as you launch any services, servers that are running um, with those specifications and we'll apply the better rate. So the next question also links in here. I didn't launch it as an RI. How do I launch it as an RI? Is it too late now? And the answer to that is again, no. The way you actually procure and use your EC2 instances is not going to change by going to the RI model. All that you're doing is you're pre-purchasing a certain package or a certain uh, number of instance types, I should say, um, with certain specifications, uh, and they sit there as that billing overlay and we'll just scan the environment always and we'll do our best to optimize um, the bill. So any servers you run that match those specifications, if you've got an unutilized RI, we'll match it up to that. Which leads into, is it locked to an instance ID? Um, oftentimes with the de development and test environment, this is a serious concern because one day you might be using it for something and the other day it could be something entirely different. It's not locked to an instance ID. In fact, we never ask you for an instance ID when you're turning on the instance type, when you're purchasing the reserved instances, I should say. So what I've said uh, a couple of times is it, it's about predictability. It's not about uh, an always on workload necessarily. It's about being able to say, I know I will have this server on for a period of time um, over the next 12 to 36 months. 
And so there's three different types of reserved instances that you can choose from. The first of which is called a light reserved instance. Uh, and that's ideal for periodic workloads that only run uh, for a couple of days or, or um, a few hours a day or whatever it may be. Uh, and it's ideal because the break even point um, is if you use that server for 28% if you purchase a one year or 11% if you purchase a three year RI, you'll, you'll be breaking even on it. Anything more than that, you'll be saving money um, and you're getting the capacity reservation. So it's often used for things like DR um, or testing if you don't do testing uh, on a very regular basis. Step up from light um, is a medium reserved instance. And that's workloads that do run most of the time, but have some level of variability. Uh, and again, these savings are significant. So you still break even if you use it more than 41% if you do one year or 19% if you use a three year RI. Uh, and so that might be for um, your web servers uh, when you're scaling up and down, um, or it may be for an application where you know that it's gonna run for uh, a period of time, maybe nine months, but you're not sure if you're gonna to continue to use it after that, um, so you can turn it off. Now, light and medium um, are similar in that you pay the upfront fee, but then you only pay the hourly rate when the servers are actually on. So theoretically, with a light or a medium RI, the only cost you ever incur is when you purchase the, the instance, uh, the reserved instance. Uh, and then if you never turn on a server, you never pay another cent for that. However, the heavy is a little bit different. So this is for those steady state workloads where you're always running uh, and you're willing to let us know that they're always gonna be running in exchange for the lowest possible hourly usage fee. Um, break even point a little bit higher again, you can see the numbers there, 56% uh, and 35% um, when you're gonna break even on those RIs. Uh, but these are the ones where you can save um, up to 70% over three years or 40% over one year's over